Herman, Town of Hempstead Clerk, Sylvia Cabana. Sylvia. Village Mayor, Don Ryan. And we just want to say how incredibly proud we are of these young winners. Yes. I want to give a huge thanks to the Dream Foundation, to the board, for taking an interest in our young leaders and building up our young leaders and giving them another chance at making something, you know, breaking barriers, really making something of their lives. And we're so proud of them. Thank you very much. We're so proud of them, and we look forward to what you will achieve in your life. And uh, Gabriela um, from CASA, which is our basically our Hispanic agency at the county, is looking for interns. So next summer, please don't be shy. She'll give you her card. It's a great way to build your resume. Anything we can do at the county to help you, we're there for you. Congratulations, and I hope you have a lot of fun tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Good evening, everybody. On behalf of the Village of Hampson, our trustees, I bring greetings. Proud to be here. They sent me with the young people, and I was thrilled. <laughs> That's for exactly how I belonged, and we had a great conversation. So proud to see how much success they brought in their young life. Their futures look so glorious. I couldn't be any more proud of them. But I must give a little plug to the Village of Hampson. It's the only home I've ever known. In fact, we're celebrating our 375th anniversary this year. I not only went through the Hampson School System, but I returned and toured the Hampson System, uh, the Hampson system for 33 years, and now I'm to college. And I was so, I'm so happy they're getting some financial help, because it's so expensive today. And then I had to give them the bad news that when I went to college, I paid $18 a credit hour. <laughs> I don't know how the parents and the students do it today, but I applaud you and I applaud these organizations for what they do. And I leave you with this thought. Happy are those who dream dreams and are ready to pay the price to make them come true. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, also, we are honored here by uh, a longtime friend and think that uh, he and I go back almost 30 years in city government. Uh, I'd like to uh, be a representative from the government of Baltimore and the support of the community in the It is indeed an honor for me to be here and uh, bring greetings. We have so, Governor uh, Last year, he asked me if I would join his cabinet uh, as a President, I'm the acting president of the uh, Higher Education Services Corporation. This corporation is the agency that provides financial assistance uh, to all students attending universities across the state of New York. Uh, if you've heard of the TAP program, uh, that is run. Uh, by my agency to her the Excelsior Scholarship, which allows uh, free tuition in the state of New York, the first in the nation to be established by our partner. Uh, I run that. There's about 28 programs uh, that we run to help students attend college at a time when college is so hard to and so expensive. And at a time when college is absolutely mandatory, almost all of the good jobs that by 2020 will be available will require a college degree. So I want to commend David Sterling, um, the founder of, of uh, this wonderful institution, uh, the board. I want to also acknowledge all the all the honorees this evening for this dinner, um, but especially the young recipient of, of, of the scholarship that you are providing. I am an immigrant. My parents were undocumented. Uh, I am from the Dominican Republic. Uh, I'm the oldest of nine children. Uh, and I came when I was 14. Um, I became a teacher, 
then I was involved in helping immigrant families and became the first Dominican elected to government in the United States. So I, I have been in many positions, but I never forgot where I came from. And that is why I believe the governor asked me, knowing that I have been a teacher, an immigrant, and I have been successful. Can you help me put higher education where it needs to be a top priority? And I said yes to him last year. That's why I'm so honored to represent him this evening uh, to congratulate everyone involved in this effort. We need it now more than ever. By the way, I am the initial sponsor of the New York State Dream Act when I was in the assembly. It wasn't last year, but very soon the governor is supporting it and the assembly is supporting it. I believe that pretty soon we will have the Dream Act in the New York State. That means that all the students that are yet to have documentation will be able to attend college and get tuition assistance. So I want to share that and it's an honor to be here and congratulations especially to the young
the things of all, we have liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You can be seated. We are very grateful for your presence because without your support, we have not accomplished our goal of providing scholarships for immigrant students here in Ohio. As you know, these students are not able to receive financial aid for, from the government to assist them in reaching their educational dream. The Dream Foundation is working very hard to be able to provide that support. In 2017, we awarded 40,000 to nine students, and on May of this year, we awarded 50,000 to 15 students. The scholarship recipients are meritorious Long Island immigrant students who have distinguished themselves through academic achievements, social service, and personal interview with the Dream Foundation Scholarship Committee. They have the motivation needed to succeed, as well as being smart and vibrant. However, they need our help to be able to continue their path to success. Dream Foundation believes that these students are going to become the future leaders of our communities here in Long Island, and they deserve our support. It's not a secret that a proper education is necessary today. Our 2018 honor is a living proof that hard, hard work, determination, and scholastic excellence can change the course of one's life. They are role models and respected members of our communities. We can only hope that our scholarship recipients follow their footsteps. Thank you for joining us tonight and be part of the Dream Foundation family. Thank you. Soon you will hear from our honorees, but what we would like to do is just to acknowledge uh, some of our friends, elected officials, uh, Nassau County um, Executive Laura Kern was here, um, Sylvia Cabana, who is the uh, town clerk, was here with us. We have um, the Honorable Carissa Lodge, legislator. Thank you, Carissa. Uh, we had um, the Mayor Don Ryan, I believe, was here for he was quite here. a while. Let me see who else. Yeah, yeah. Josh will have a legislature, legislator Lodge. Who, by the way, is a graduate of Nassau Community College and Harvard, and was one of uh, the good folks who was with us uh, when it was time to select all of the students. So I have to thank you for all you do. Is with us also a representative from the office of legislator Monica Martinez. Thank you. Also, we have um, a dear friend that I've known for over 30 years who is representing the governor and that's Dr. Guillermo Linares. Guillermo? Thank you. At that same table is the Grand Dame of Nassau County and Dad is the Executive Director of the Hispanic Brotherhood, Margarita Grazing. I also would like to thank to Dr. Harry Golan from Toro College. Thank you for being here. Also, I'm sorry, Larry Levy from Hofstra, a good friend always of the community. Thank you, Larry, for being here. 
uh, Helen Alessi from Long Beach uh, Latino Civic Association is with us. Christopher Williams for, from Suffolk uh, County Community College Foundation. Thank you, Christopher. Dr. Herbert King, the president of Nassau Community College is here with us. And at that table are some of the administrators and friends uh, who are joining us from Nassau Community College. Thank you for your support. I want to thank you also to, uh, to the table of Southside Hospital. And we have the table, and then the table number four. Vivian Hart from Toronto. Where's Vivian? There you go. Thank you, Thank you Vivian. Vivian. People from United People Bank. Yes. Elizabeth Custodio. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you for that table. Personal privilege and a very good friend of mine from Suffolk County, uh, Sammy Gonzalez. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank also to the table of David Sperling of all his staff. Where is that table? The last table. All the staff is supporting. Also uh, from Westbury, one of the members of the board of trustee at Westbury um, High School, or college, school district, uh, Pedro Quintanilla. Also, Milagro Vicente, who is a trustee at Valley Stream, also on the board of directors of the Girl Scouts of Nassau County. Lisa Milgrim is representing Long Island Hispanic Bar Association. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Pilar. Tenemos también, this with us, also the president of Salvacom, Jorge Guadron. Uh, we are going to make a little pause because we need to celebrate. Who are celebrating today their Independence Day? Who is Salvadoria? Guatemala? No? Honduras? Honduras? El Salvador? We noticed that El Salvador is a big, Salvador is a big population here in Nassau, and South Africa, in Long Island. And Nicaragua. Chile is another country that uh, the Independence Day is going to be celebrated very soon. Somebody is from Chile? Chile, not Chile. Where is Silvana? Hey, Silvana, she's from Chile. Mexico. Cuantos mexicanos? Felicitaciones a todos ustedes. Congratulations to all people. Uh, we are here to celebrate this special day because today is a day of celebration. We want to continue. Thank you to uh, the president of Kogala, uh, Irma Guadron. Thank you, Irma. I would like to. Yeah, if we miss anybody, is not because we missed you, there's just so many people. Everybody here is like super special. Uh, I was just commenting to uh, today Sterling, who is really the founder uh, and the head of it, his generosity. That's an hour of community. Uh, yeah. We have a full house. We have a full house. And for that, we thank you. Thank you, thank you for your support. Um, you will be hearing, you will be looking at the reason why we're here, and that's the students. Um, we need for you to engage us. We need for you to support us. This is a wonderful thing. If we raise 50000 we want to raise 100000 
Uh, we want to raise as much money as we can so that we could, in turn, provide many more scholarships to very deserving folks. The, the, the most difficult thing for us when we were interviewing is that we couldn't possibly give a scholarship to every single one of the students. And we want to change that. And we're looking for your support. And what we should be here tonight is the beginning of what we intend to do. This is only a second year or a second uh, gala. We intend to have a gala every year. We will be looking for some of you to join us as people who will be choosing uh, the honorees. Now I would like to introduce to the 2018 scholars. Uh, none of them were able to come for different reasons, but we have some of them here. So I'm going to call them. I would like uh, each person to come here. Agustin Bess. Aida Guzman, Micaela Juárez, Brady Ortiz, Stephanie Pérez, Tania Prudencio, Rocío Rivas. This is why we do this. Look at them. This is our future. Uh, we need to help. We have help. We need to do some more. Um, some of these students are going on to different colleges. All of them graduated with honors. Um, these are the folks that we need to put our arms around them. We need to be supportive of them. Is the future. This is our future. I want to introduce legislator of Nassau County, Joshua Lappesen. Thank you, Joshua. He was also one of the members of the Elevation Committee of the Dream Foundation. Un aplauso para él, para Joshua. He is the, young, the youngest legislator of New York State. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. The biggest speaker and give these kids a huge round of applause and show them how proud we are of them. I've met every single one of you on the stage, but these kids are the future of this stage and the stage is in good hands. Congratulations, and I want you all to know. I want you all to know that we're right, you have a friend in me. Congratulations again. So again, my name is Joshua Lapizan, and I am both privileged and honored to represent the 18th District of Nassau County Legislature. Uh, thank you very much for honoring me uh, with the invitation tonight. Before I begin, I do want to thank Gloria Robles for her extraordinary work. Gloria! David Sterling for his continued advocacy. this board, all the staff, volunteers, and supporters of the Dream Foundation, thank you for helping to make this night a reality and to make the dream for this kid possible. Thank you very much. And of course, I want to thank Dr. Martin, who I want to be, wrote my college letter of recommendation not too many years ago. <laughs> Tonight is a special night for me, and it's not just because of my friendship with many of you but it's because of my family's history and as I stand before you tonight, I am the proud grandson of immigrants. My grandfather was a refugee in Poland during the Holocaust who came to this country to escape violence and seek opportunities for his family, in which he eventually paved the way for his siblings to immigrate here as well. My grandmother Rose came to this country from Havana, Cuba. Anyone from Cuba here? She came from Havana, Cuba. 
Cuba, seeking a better life with my grandfather in the United States of America. With little English, little money, and no established networks, they settled in Canarsie, Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, Brooklyn. My grandfather, who learned the basics of electrical work in the refugee camps in Poland, joined the IPW and worked as an electrician. While my grandfather raised four daughters, over 60 years later, and if you take one thing from my remarks tonight, is this. Over 60 years later, they have seen their grandson graduate from Nassau Community College to Cornell University and then to Harvard, and this November of 23, Having spoken to my grandparents about their story, and this is something I hope you'll take with you. Having spoken to my grandparents about their story in the fabric of the hundreds of thousands of similar stories of immigrants coming to this country, my grandmother said something to me which forever will render me speechless. She said, Joshua, you are my American dream. And you see, the moral of this story is that the United States has been and must remain the land of opportunity for all people where no matter what you look like or where you come from or what religion you practice, to hard work and to work you can make it here and you can make it land for the land. That's the whole point. So my friends, that's why I'm here tonight. So that 60 years from now, in this very room, there are going to be a similar celebration where descendants of immigrants, just like all of us, can speak about becoming their parents or their grandparents' versions of the American dream. Congratulations to our best honorees. Thank you to all those who donated to support this a tremendous organization and God bless America. Thank you, everyone. Last but not least, and this is the most fun part of my job, on behalf of the 1.3 million residents of Nassau County, I proudly and humbly present this citation to the Oregon and the Dream Foundation. I wish you happy and much continued success for years to come. Buenas noches 
This is a, a team effort. And we already recognize a lot of incredible leaders, incredible supporters. But we also recognize a lot of the people who, who make this event happen. So a big round of applause to the honorees and to the awardees. But also a big round of applause to the people who are helping serving the food and making this event happen. Big round of applause to them as well. Our bartender in the back, big round of applause. That would make us very happy. Our, our artist, big round of applause as well. Joshua had a great message about the American dream. And many people have very different definitions of what that means. But what we do know now is that many people feel like it's out of reach. The Pew Research Center said that only 45% of the American people feel like that would achieve the American dream. For Latinos, it's only 32%. For African Americans, 17%. And the American dream is not a political talking point. It's something more special. It's our stories. It's our immigrant stories. And for me, my immigrant story starts with in the last day that I was in Mexico. I was in a classroom. I was like about five years old. And I was playing with my toys here in kindergarten. And all of a sudden, my teacher tapping me and saying, Caesar, your mom's here. You know, for me, at five years old, I was just playing around. But for me, I, my, I saw my mom with my little brother. And instead of going home, we went to pick up my two older sisters. Instead of going home that day, we went to the Catedral de Puebla, a big town cathedral. And I remember her going straight to the altar, going inside in the big chamber of solemn silence. Hard going straight, kneeling down and saying, Josito Cuidados, God watch over us. That was the last day that we were in Mexico. And there was a picture that I haven't paid attention to until very recently. And in that picture, it was me in the middle with my yellow blue uniform, my little brother to the left with his blue gray uniform, my two older sisters with their gray skirts and their blue uniform. And my mom, next to us, towering over us in a beautiful blue dress. She's only 5'1", but she was a tower of courage. And I also noticed something else. In that picture, she had a plastic bag. And I asked her years later, Mom, what did you have in that plastic bag? And she said, you know, medical records, school records, cash, just that plastic bag to start a new life. Just that plastic bag for us to continue and live that American elusive dream that we all talk about. And all of a sudden, in a quick flash, I found myself in the U.S.-Mexico border. Silence. With just me, my mom, my two sisters, my little brother, and the coyote, the people that cross the immigrants. And we're just waiting. And I can see the rocky terrain. I can smell the wet dirt. I can see the, dis the lights in the distance dancing around of the U.S. border. Vamos! And all of a sudden, the coyote tells us, let's go, let's go, let's go. And we're running, and we're running, and we're running. And for me at that moment, I wasn't afraid. All I know is that we were running. But I can feel the heavy breathing. I can feel that we were running. Now I can imagine what must, I cannot imagine what was going on in my mom's heart and mind. She could have been killed. She could have been raped. 
But the love of her children was more powerful than anything. That night, she risked everything to give me a better life. So when the conversation on immigration takes at the center level, it's very easy to say, you know what? I love the dreamers. I love Caesar because he speaks English. He has a law degree. He is the good immigrant. That implies what? That there's a bad immigrant. That our parents are the bad immigrants. But I tell you this, I will never blame my mother for giving me a better life. I will never blame my mother for giving me everything so that I one day have an opportunity to live a And because of her, I was able to graduate high school, graduate college, and graduate law school. But I didn't do it alone. It was through hard sacrifice. It was through that help of so many people. And for me, the most special moment that I have that night is that many things were going through a hard mind. But I know there was something very special going through her heart. And the moment I realized and I found out what that was, it was that on February 3rd of 2016, in a beautiful gilded room, courtroom, in downtown Brooklyn, with a judge with his majestic robe, new attorneys ready to be sworn in. And I lifted my hand up and I took the oath of being an attorney. And that night, that day, I became the first undocumented attorney to be admitted in the great state of New York. But for me, the most special moment of that morning, that after I finished, I turned to my mother and I told her, Ma, tu hijo ya es mi abogado. She turned to me and said, Siempre eras mi abogado. You were always my attorney. So today, we are celebrating something that we hope that we can continue the American dream. We hope that we can aspire to ensure that we continue to open those doors of opportunity. Today, we as a team, I believe the great things in history, great things in Long Island, in New York, in Staten Island, are made possible by a movement. You're not alone. We have your back. And I didn't see in your bias of attorneys but I didn't see any The only thing that I will say is that, as my mom has said, that the American dream is not about a fancy car, a big house, or a corner office in Washington. The American dream is about doing your part of opening the doors of opportunity, opportunities, just as like other people have opened the doors of opportunity for you. Regardless of the immigration status, religion, sexual orientation, gender, and so on. That is what the American dream is all about. For all of us to do our part. Because we know very well that we have a climate where it's very easy to blame immigrants for the problems facing the nation. But we can solve this together as Long Islanders, as New Yorkers, as Americans. And we can get this done. Because I know that the American dream, no matter how elusive, no matter how hard it is, we can still achieve it. You all represent the American dream. You both represent, Joshua said, your parents' American dream. My mom, that day, in her heart, was risking everything with the hope that one day, I can imagine, one of our sons could be an attorney. And I am the embodiment of our American dream. So today, we want to make sure that we are sending that message that the American dream is still alive, is still fired up, and we are not going to let us defeat it, right? So I want everyone who's ready to ensure that the American dream is still alive, please stand up. Se puede, 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 se puede
¿Sí se puede? 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 I want, I want to continue to thank you to our friends, not only for at home, also want to thank New York Life. And I want to introduce another scholar, we are going to know him. Daphne, Dirisai, 
President, Founder, Long Island Latino Teacher Association. Her professional experience includes Introduction. We were very brave and spoke very good English. <laughs> uh, many thanks to the Dream Foundation for this honor. Uh, we are here celebrating the scholarships recipients, very deserving uh, of these scholarships, as well as the other awardees. Muchas felicidades, congratulations. And briefly, I want to share with you that 27 years ago, I arrived at the Sony Group University to complete a degree in linguistics, which I began in Puerto Rico, uh, my home country. I was only able to, go to achieve that dream because of the investment by someone called Paul Douglas, someone I never met, but whose generosity has shaped my life and my identity. The financial assistance he afforded me every year while in college, gave me a diploma with no loans attached. But most importantly, his kindness inspired me to contribute to the educational dreams and growth of many young people. This is in part why today I am a very proud public school teacher and also a servant of the Long Island Latino Teachers Association, or better known as LITA, an organization with a mission. Thank you. Thank you. This organization helps students graduate from high school and college, and tonight I am excited to share these recognitions with some LITA board members who are present here with me tonight. Uh, Matt, and Larise, Ricardo, and Ernesto, Vicky, Marina, Pat, Julie. Uh, thank you for your never-ending support. This is your award too. Uh, we advance in this mission yet very well deserved. I don't do it alone, and the awards are not just for me. Uh, we advance in this mission with the help of many collaborators who are also here tonight by advocating for our students and providing them with college career experiences, scholarships for teachers, cultural events, and summer programs. I know everyone here feels that investing in your education is the greatest gift we can give to you, to your family, to your community, and to our country and our world. I hope tonight becomes so special to you that you also be inspired to pay it forward and help others achieve their dreams too. Thank you. Thank you very much.
also is the president of the New York City Psychological Association, NYSPA, France Exhibition, and he is the president of Queen Psychological Association. In addition, he's, he also has a live show on the internet, which is the Roy Aranda Show on Tribune TV. Everyone, please welcome Dr. Roy Aranda. Uh, executive privilege here, in addition to all of the things that we talked about, Dr. Aranda, he happens to be the chairman of the board of directors of the Hempstead Hispanic Civic Association, where I am the executive director, and he has been on my board about 25 years, something like that. Close to 30. So, Dr. Roy Aranda. Thank you. I almost got scared that I was supposed to uh, do something for your tuition or for education or something. I wasn't sure, but thanks. So, um... subjected to widespread social injustices 
They are less worthy of services because they are illegals. They are invalidated because of their speech or accent and because of their appearance. There are many consequences to these stereotypes. Denial of or inadequate treatment. Denial of needed services including educational and career opportunities. Loss of income. Loss of benefits. Enduring emotional and physical conditions. Approximately 11 million Hispanics are undocumented. The current political climate reinforces marginalization and stereotypes and has resulted in increased anxiety and fear among many Hispanics, not only the undocumented, but even immigrants who are in the U.S. lawfully, and citizens who worry about possible separation from family members who are undocumented and fear ICE stops and law enforcement suites targeting Hispanics. Dismantling DACA, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, has created a sense of foreboding and doom. Almost 800,000 were approved for DACA since it was instituted in 2012. DACA enabled young people to pursue their dreams. There are students, employers and employees, homeowners and business owners. There are sons and daughters, some now are parents. Diversity has been the hallmark of what makes this country great. Yet, I have seen the very roots of diversity eroded and pulled out from under us, and the already precarious lives of many Hispanics grows increasingly tenuous. What greater example than tearing apart innocent young children from their parents, unmoved, perhaps unaware of the long-lasting consequences, particularly the emotional fallout. I created a toolkit for working with Hispanics, some of the things we all can push for to champion Hispanics. Be aware of common stereotypes, routinely engage in self-monitoring of beliefs about Hispanics. Do not assume all Hispanics are cut from the same cloth. Do not assume that the same procedures or interventions apply to all Hispanics. Be sensitive to cultural, typical conversations and language usage. Consider language dominance, cultural, religious, political, social, familiar traditions, and attitudes and beliefs regarding the many institutions they depend on. Seek as needed collateral sources that have hands-on knowledge about the upbringing, roots, and traditions of the Spanish. In parting, I leave you with a quotation made by the late Senator McCain that I find fits this occasion well. America's greatest strength has always been its hopeful vision of human progress. Depriving the oppressed of the beacon of hope could lose us the world we have built and thrived in. It could cost our reputation in history as a nation distinct from all others in our achievements, our identity, and our enduring influence on mankind. Our values are central to all three. What? Is this message, if not the embodiment of a bipartisan vision for us all? Thank you and congratulations to all the students. I want to thank Dr. Kim. Thank you. I would like to send to the Christian Boys newspaper our friend Marina Bieber. Thank you for joining us, Marina. We have also here Noticia. Jennifer Martinez is covering today. Thank you, Noticia, thank you. Latinus TV. Jairo uh, Zuluaga, where is Jairo? Jairo, no está. Hey, Jairo, thank you for joining us. The next presentation and next honorees are two folks that I know really, really well. Uh, they are, you know, leaders in, in our community, uh, in Hempstead particularly. Uh, they are leaders uh, in the Salvadorian community. Uh, these are the folks, and I will introduce them in a second, who every year um, go to El Salvador, um, they bring 
all kinds of backpacks. They, they are trying to build a hospital there. They bring all types of supplies. Um, they are well known. Um, they are, in fact, the leaders of the Comité Cívico Salvadoreño. And with that, we would like to honor Vivian Pereira and my dear friend Shandy from the Comité Salvadoreño. Quiero agradecer eh, especialmente a Dream Foundation por la oportunidad y también quiero agradecer a los del Comité Cívico Salvadoreño que siempre están ahí trabajando para los más necesitados acá en lo que se pueda y en El Salvador. Y también quiero agradecer a, a mi familia porque siempre está apoyándonos y también quiero felicitar a los becados Felicidades y que todo les salga muy bien en la vida porque ese es el sueño americano, que todo nos salga perfecto, bien. Y como no soy muy buena hablando, quería pasarles a, al señor Chandler, director ejecutivo del comité, para que les siga hablando de lo que es el comité. Buenas noches, gracias a Dream Foundation por la oportunidad. Y que por su excelente trabajo, felicidades, bendiciones. Gracias. Good evening. Most of you know us. My name is Kaliti Chandy. And my other half, I'm Mosa Vivian Pereira. First, I'd like to thank for giving us this wonderful honor. And second, I'd like to thank David and Gloria for this great honor. Thank you. I also like to pay for my parents, Kansi and Paz, who taught me good deeds. Growing up, I learned from them, helping others who needs the most. I'd like to thank all the officials who came to support Dream Foundation and I also like to thank our community members who always come, spend their time and help the community. I also like to thank our Renate committee, Katie Nieta. Thank you. Twenty years ago, when I met Vivian, we got involved with a committee called Raise Latino Americanas Inc. Here we were part of the organization to raise scholarship for college students and every year Vivian proudly provided one of the scholarships on behalf of our daycare. About seven years ago we got involved with the Committee Civico Salvadre Inc. Mission of committee is charity and goodwill dedicated in assisting our neighbor communities and in Salvador providing wheelchairs to handicapped children and elderly. We took this task and formed a new committee. Since then, committee members worked so hard and provided not only hundreds of brand new wheelchairs, also food for thousands of family, medicine, beds, sewing machine, and lamina prakasa, and same time helping the local economy because we buy everything in Salvador. This is done on a daily basis and committee members pay their own travel expense. Nothing comes out of from committee's fund. I must tell you a success story. About four years ago, I got a call from a friend, Roberto Mendoza, who was a family chef at present. Obama. He told me that he knew someone in San Salvador that lost her job and needs some help so she can provide a food for her 90-year-old mother. 
And if committee can donate a commercial sewing machine and a kartadora, which we did, three years later, she was on the national news as a business woman of the year. Now she hired more employees and exported her goods to Mexico and Europe. We felt that we are a part of our sex story. Unfortunately, our mother passed away last year. This is one of the many stories that committee has. Also, committee has youth, talent, cultural, and soccer league organization. Every year, committee participate in the Spirit of Swamita in Manhattan to celebrate the Spanish Heritage Month, promoting our culture. Committee is well known in Salvador as well as here at home for their noble work. Their success didn't come easy. Sometimes people they criticize that why I'm helping a span because I'm in the span. But you know what? That makes me very happy because I can help. Thank you. We are so proud of uh, Dream Foundation because two years ago I was involved in the selection of scholarship recipient and I knew that you have go through a big process. It's not easy. God bless you, David, and your team. Gloria, you know, you guys do fantastic job. Give them a big round of applause. I also like to thank our children and family members who always support us. Thanks to our president, Vivian Pereira, for her hard work and dedication. She is a fighter. I know that. <laughs> and uh, at the end, uh, this honor is not only for us. This belongs to our committee members for their hard work and as well as our good friend, George and Margarita, who are also part of this bono over. Thank you, George and Margarita. Thank you. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you. Finally, I would like to invite our scholar, Lorna Diaz. He uh, was uh, he was in the first place he received the big amount of uh, he was awarded with fifteen thousand. Uh, uh, Rona, I'd like to invite you to, the, to, to say a little of your story. For this applause to my Rona Gira, first place for the 2018 scholarship of the Green Foundation. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rona Gira. I'm from El Salvador. And also, I am a graduate of the I would like to thank you for giving me a wonderful opportunity, opportunity to follow the dream. I previously only dreamed about receiving this prestigious scholarship, but with the help of family and mentors such as you, I will be able to realize my, my treasured dream of becoming an accountant. My father came from a, from a very poor family, but despite this, he was a very intelligent person. He was a fighter and an entrepreneur. And those parents allowed him and his family to get out of trouble. Unfortunately, he died when he was eight years old. But the pain became a, a source of change. And I decided I should remember that one of my inspiration to be an accountant is him. At the moment of coming to this country, one of my dreams, dreams was to find the opportunity to attend college. I knew it was not going to be easy because English is not my first language. However, I think a lot of those are the I had helped by everyone I encountered at Hansen High School. The Green Foundation Scholarship allowed me a chance to succeed 
in the future to be in the position to also put out some of us. I'm having the privilege to attend college and at the same time explore a lot of interesting subjects that I have previously never learned about. The challenges the challenge of the spirit that I will encounter will serve to intensify my soul for success. I may stumble, I may falter, but I will never fall. My impulse to, to move forward, to be fine, and become a better person prevents me from stopping. From stopping, prevents me from being anything other than a success. I want to thank the Foundation for trusting me and giving me the necessary support to achieve my dream. The Foundation is the engine that keeps me moving. Thank you. Thank you. One final honorary. We're talking about the Dream Foundation and we're talking about youngsters who have been brought to this country, um, who have done the right thing, but because of their status are not eligible uh, for funding from the government. And hopefully uh, when we speak, Dr. Linares, and Dr. King and Dr. Gardin, when we go up to Albany, we're looking to change that. So, rather quickly, let me tell you about our last honoring. He came to this country undocumented. Um, if there is a book, actually by that name, uh, undocumented, and if you have not read it, read it. Um, Dr. Hal Fernandez came to this country with his brother, uh, without papers, um, went and settled with his family in New Jersey, did all the right things, graduated from high school, I believe that he was a valedictorian of your high school, went on to Princeton University, um, and then went on to Harvard Medical School. This is a man who symbolizes exactly what dreamers are supposed to be about. This is uh, Dr. Hernandez, who we in our community hold with the highest esteem, who is always there for us, um, who represents what it is to be an immigrant, um, who represents um, just the best in our community. So it's a great pleasure to welcome Dr. Harold, Harold Fernandez. And he looks at me and he said, you know, Daddy, 
you have the best job in the world. Whenever you're stressed out, you can just get a knife and a saw and you can just cut it to people's chest. <laughs> so I told him, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Okay? I don't do it out of stress. I do it to help people. I do it to help people so they can go back to their families, to their communities, so they can go on and do it for work, like the work that is at least the girls in our community. So it's really an honor to, to be able to do that. But you know, it started as a dream. It started as a dream when I was a young kid, then I would see doctors and nurses come to my house and help my abuelitas, and I wanted to be able to do the same thing for other people. So I'm a cardiac surgeon, but you know, it's amazing because I do the surgeries and the people that take care of the patients when I'm not there, like right now in the, in the hospital, are physician assistants. And actually we have two here today, Jerry and Stephanie are here. Please stand up. Because, you know, and the reason she's coming is that I just want you to see what these scholarships do, okay? Because I was just talking to Stephanie and she shared with me that she actually was helped by a scholarship from the Dream Foundation. And now she's helping people, she's making people better. So this, this events like this, the money we raise from these events, are to help people so that we can help other people in our community. So thank you, Stephanie. And I just want to say a couple of words about dreams. Now, I like to be simple, but when I see my patients at, at the end of the visit, I tell them two things. I tell them to, you know, three or four times exercise and to watch their weight. And actually a third thing, to keep a healthy notebook where they record everything that, that, that happens. So today, in terms of dreams, just two things. One is that you know a dream is only a dream if you don't put any action into it. So I want you guys, congratulations, but I want you to continue doing what you're doing, putting action into those thoughts that you have in your mind and in your heart to make them happen. And in fact, I'm gonna challenge you, okay? So I want you, you know, not to have little dreams, to have big dreams. You know, when I was in high school, and I was the valedictorian and whatever, I met with my guidance counselor, and she gave me a list of the schools to apply, and they were all community colleges. I mean, there's nothing wrong with community colleges, but, you know, I wanted something else. I wanted something bigger. And on my own, I went and I applied to the schools that I wanted to apply to, okay? And it took tiny, tiny little steps. So, you know, the first step for me, was when I got a job delivering the newspaper, I dreamed of being, what I told people, the best newspaper delivery boy in America. And that's why I would get up at 4.30 in the morning every day, go and do my paper route, and then go to school. And after about a year, I was selected as the newspaper carrier of the month. <laughs> so my paper, you know, my yeah, my paper, and my father cut it out, and he put it on his locker room, and his locker at work, and my mom put it in, in her purse, and she would just show it to everyone. Even people she didn't know. You know, she would go up to them, oh, look, 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 my son is the newspaper carrier of the month. <laughs> and, you know, and I share the story because it was with that same energy, enthusiasm, and passion that I used to become the best newspaper carrier that I used at Princeton, at Harvard, and that I use now as a doctor. So when I go and meet my patients, I have that confidence inside of me that I'm gonna do the best possible job for them without any question. So that's the first, the first part. Uh, put some action into your dreams. And the last one is that, you know, and this is a, from a quote from Gabriel Garcia Marquez, that we don't die when we die. We die when we stop dreaming. So this goes for them, and this goes for all of us. Please, we dream alive. Thank you. Well, thank you, our scholars. They were there for 30 minutes or a little more. Thank you. I know you are tired now. 
All of us, we can enjoy the music, the food, and it's time just to relax. Thank you for everyone, and now it's time to dance. <laughs> And I think that this is an important thing for us in the community, for our businesses, that not only can we be part of this organization, but you can affiliate with Mass Community College and the Mass Community College Foundation to further the goals of these students through scholarships and your goodwill. Thank you so much. Good night. Go, 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 go.